Chief Sharkey? What is it, Pruitt? Mayor Orderly was just here. He left this letter for you. Thanks. <laughs> you want to read it, Pruitt? I'm sorry, sir. You always read somebody else's mail? No, sir, but I did want to speak to you about that. It's a problem. What is? The mail, sir. Recruits shouldn't get letters from home. It makes them homesick and they get depressed. What? That's right, sir. This morning after mail call, there were two men in the head, crying. <laughs> Pruitt, you're not supposed to take notice of what a man does in the head. <laughs> if he's crying, let him cry. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Stop the men from getting their letters? Well, sir, I have a plan. Would you like to hear it? Not really. Okay, here goes. <laughs> What I'd do is I wouldn't give the men any mail until after they finished their nine weeks of boot camp. Nine weeks? That's right. What do you think of my plan, sir? You really want to know what I think, Pruitt? I think it's bad. And you know what else? What, sir? You got a lot of hair in your nose. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, Shark. Oh, hi, Robinson. Have a cup of coffee. You're just the guy I want to see. Oh, yeah? Yep. I read an article in the paper this morning, and I thought about you. You're still going steady with Florence, right? My foxy mama, I sure am. And you plan to get married, right? Yeah, someday. Ah. Okay, listen to this. Single people healthier than married people. A government study just concluded reveals that unmarried people enjoy better health than married people or people who have been married. What? Say, it's the truth. Look at you. You're going steady, and already you need a checkup. <laughs> You'll use any excuse to rationalize why you never got married. What do you got against marriage anyway? Because marriage and the Navy don't go together. It just doesn't make it. Oh, that's ridiculous. You mean there was never a girl you were crazy about and wanted to marry and spend the rest of your life with? Rita Hayworth, I would have settled for a weekend. <laughs> That's it? No one else? No one right now? Robinson, you don't know me very well. You think I'm a crude sailor, but I'm a gentleman, and a gentleman never discusses his romantic affairs. You owe it to the broad. <laughs> oh, so there is someone. Who is she? Robinson, you got a foxy mama? I got a foxy mama. And all God's children got a foxy mama. <laughs> Excuse me. I have a first aid class to supervise. Okay, I'll come back later. Where are you going to be? Hi. <laughs> okay, Pruitt, how's it going? Very well, sir. We've just covered asphyxiation and electrocution, and we're about to get into transportation of the injured. Okay. Lift the injured man. Now, it's very important when the man is injured that he's strapped in securely so that he doesn't fall out. Because this can be very embarrassing when you show up at sick bay with an empty stretcher. <laughs> now, the injured person could be suffering from shock. And shock in a few seconds could be very critical. Daniels? Daniels, do you know anything about shock? Do you know how to treat shock? Well, if you ask me, the way I deal with it, I see what's happening. You know, like, is the person cold? Is he hot? What is his breathing like? And then there's his pulse. That's great, Daniels. Skolnick just died. Kowalski? Me, sir? No, Dr. Albert Schweitzer. Yes, you. What do you know about shock? Shock, sir? Shock, what you're in right now. Kowalski, there's nothing wrong in being Polish, but don't abuse it. All right, it's very important when the man is in shock that you keep the feet 
up above the head. <laughs> now, when the, uh, when the man is in shock, there's a tendency that he'll be thirsty, but he's not allowed to have, it, to have anything to drink. Do you know why, Mignoni? Yes, sir. It's because in that position, there's only one way to get water in him. Wrong! <laughs> Because when he's thirsty, if you give him anything to drink, nausea could set in and he could pass out. Skolnick, how do you feel? Uh, nauseous and I'm going to pass out. <laughs> Good. Okay, Pruitt. That's it. Tomorrow we'll go into uh, choking and bleeding. Move him out and get the men ready for chow. Uh, sir? Yeah, what is it, Crawford? Uh, sir, I was wondering if I could, like, uh, have a little rap session with you because, see, there's something really heavy that I'd like to lay on you, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, it's got me kind of strung out in a deep hole. And I was wondering if you could sort of, like, uh, help me with it. Help you? I don't even understand you. <laughs> what are you talking about? I've got a personal problem, sir. Could it be grammar? <laughs> Come on. Okay, Crawford. We'll start all over again. Well, you see, sir. See, I got this girl back home. And now she's been my girl for a long time. I mean, in fact, when I get out the Navy, we're supposed to get married. So? Well, sir, I got this letter from her, and she says that it's all over. And, and, I, and I don't know what to do, sir. Come on, Crawford. I mean, you got a Dear John letter. A lot of guys get that. Come on, huh? Put yourself together. <laughs> Hey. Well, I'm sorry, Chief, but I really love her. Crawford, can I give you a little advice? If she doesn't want to wait for you, forget about it. I had a girl that didn't wait for me, and she married another guy. Well, how long did she wait? Eight and a half years. <laughs> forget about it. When you get out of boot camp and boot training, you'll have plenty of girls. Yes, sir. But not like Holly. Look at her picture. Is this your girl? Yes, sir. Oh, jeez. <laughs> mm. You got the pick of the litter. <laughs> Forget about it, huh? But I can't, sir. I just can't. Hey, that's why I wanted to talk to you. Because I figured you could tell me how to hold on to her. One way is with a leash. <laughs> Listen, I think I have an idea. I know how you can get it. You do? Yeah. Instead of her dumping you, you dump her. But she already dumped me in her letter, sir. Forget about it. You never got the letter. Sir? You write her a goodbye letter and date it one week before the letter she sent you. That way she'll think it's your idea. Yes, sir, but... but see, I don't know if I know how to go about writing a letter like that to my girl Holly. It scares me. Listen, I'll write the letter. I'll even type it up, make it look official. But first... We ought to tear up this picture and send it back to her. You know something? She looks better now. <laughs> we go on the chat. Don't worry about anything. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, hey, you know a lot about women, don't you, sir? <laughs> Quite a bit, kid. Quite a bit. I was just surprised that you never got married. Some people donate their body to science. I decided to donate mine to the women of the world. <laughs> Carry on, Crawford. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll leave Holly's letter with you, sir. Gee, oh. <laughs> Bad. Oof, oof, oof. Company 144, Chief Robinson. No, he's not. Right, right.
Dear Holly, I hate to say it, but this is goodbye. Marriage and the Navy don't go together. <laughs> Love always Holly. Ho Holly. Sharky? <laughs> Holly? <laughs> Son of a gun! Ah, <laughs> oh, hi, Robinson. Hey, Sharky! <laughs> <laughs> You son of a gun. <laughs> what? Nothing. You feel like talking? Well, what do you want to talk about? I don't know. Life, politics, women. What is this, face the nation? <laughs> no, I just thought we'd shoot the breeze. You know the trouble with people today is they keep everything all locked up inside. People should be able to say whatever they want to people. Yeah? Yeah. So if there's anything you want to say, just come out with it. Anything I want to say, I, I just come out with it? Sure. Okay. You're boring me. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. It's okay if you don't want to talk. Uh, but you know something, Shark? I thought I knew you, but I guess I don't. Like, I don't know where you're coming from. Minnesota, I'm a boat builder. I sell canoes. What does it matter where I come from? Anything else you want to know? What I mean is, as long as we've been knowing each other, you never told me about the kind of women you like. But I guess a guy like you, who's been all over the world, wouldn't have any hang-ups about women, right? Right. A woman's a woman, right? Right. Say, if I pass this test, what do I win? A Toyota or a broad? Chuck. I'm gonna tell you something personal. I mean, really intimate stuff, man. Stuff I've never told anybody else, but I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, what? Once when I was in high school, I dated this really good looking blonde chick. You know what I mean? <laughs> you son of a gun. You see, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Anything like that ever happened to you? Yeah, I dated a lot of blonde chicks when I was in high school. <laughs> that's not what I mean. What I mean is, did you ever date others? Like a brunette. Yeah. I dated a brunette. How brunette? <laughs> Just brunette. I didn't think too much about the color. Right. <laughs> right. Hey, Shaq, why don't you meet me in town tonight? I want to buy you a drink. Well, what's the occasion? What are we drinking to? How about Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> you son of a gun. Hello, Pruitt. Oh, hi, Chief. I didn't see you come in. Can I buy you a beer? No, thanks. I'm waiting for someone. You alone? No, sir. I'm with a date. Uh, she's gone to the ladies' room. Oh, is it a steady thing? <laughs> no, sir. It's the first time she's gone this evening. <laughs> what I meant is your steady date. Oh, no, just one of them. Oh, you have a lot of them, huh? Yes, sir. And I have this little joke I tell them. See, every girl I take out, I buy a glass of wine. Well, that way I could say I got a port in every girl. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Stand on a girl in every port. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Did you make that up, Pruitt? Yes, sir. You like it? It was very bad. Oh, well. Here comes my girl. <laughs> Chief Sharky, I'd like you to meet Evelyn Thadburn. Hi. Hi. On Saturday night, what do you two do for laughs? 
Get a basketball and dribble around each other? Dribble around each other? That's funny. Sure is. Well, Chief, we gotta shove off now. Well, watch out for the power lines. Oh, boy. It's true what they say, boy. There's a girl for every guy in this world. I believe that. I just saw Pruitt with his date. <laughs> Boy's a lucky guy. That was either that girl or a giraffe. <laughs> well, speaking of girls, Shark, here come our dates. Hi. Shark, you know my girl, Flo. And this is my friend, Audrey. Hi. <laughs> well, get in, girls. drinks and then we'll decide what we're gonna do. What are you gonna have, Audrey? I'll have a Harvey Wall banger. <laughs> you ever have a Harvey Wall banger, hon? <laughs> well, if it's made right, it's fantastic. <laughs> you can try some of mine, see how you like it. Well, where are we gonna go later? Let's go to the seagull's nest. It's nice. They have dining and dancing. Oh, Florence, please, that place don't make it. It's a drag. Well, where do you want to go, Audrey? I'd like to go to the disco cave and boogie down. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been there, hon? <laughs> well, you love it. It'll blow your mind. Is low down. Well, what's wrong with that? Let's get low down and funky. Do you dig funk, hon? <laughs> and do you know what we can do with the disco game? The bump. Get down. Bump. Get down. Bump. Get down. Bump. Get down. Get down. Bump. 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 Robinson, what are you doing to me? You said we were going to meet here, right? Now I turn around and I'm sitting over there with one of the Supremes, sipping on, <laughs> sipping on a Harvey Wall banger and getting bumped to death. Well, I, I surprised you. I know you're feeling kind of low and I know this make you feel better. Robinson, let me get this straight. Florence is your date, right? Right. And I'm with Harvey Wall banger, is that it? <laughs> What's wrong with that? You lose one chick and you get another one. Robinson, what are you talking about? All right, I gotta admit it. I was in your office, and I saw that letter you wrote to, uh, what was her name? Holly. Holly? Yeah, the one whose picture you tore up. Robinson, you just made the biggest boo-boo of your life. That wasn't my girl, and it wasn't my letter. It wasn't? No. That was a recruit kid in my outfit. He got a Dear John letter, and I was trying to help him out. Oh, you're kidding. <sighs> Robinson, next time, huh? do me a favor. Ask me. Uh, ask me. I don't believe this. Oh, Sharky, I'm sorry, man. I mean, okay, if you want to split, you go ahead. I'll explain it to the ladies, okay? I mean, you just take off, right? Well, wait a minute, Robinson. We're shipmates. A shipmate can't run out on a buddy. You're going to stay? Well, let's say it's a first for me. I never tasted a Harvey Wallbanger. <laughs> Whatever happened to that kid in your outfit who got the Dear John letter? I told you. I wrote to that girl and made it sound like he was brushing her off. You really think that'll bring her back? Can't miss. You know why? Because women always want what they can't get. Ask Robert Redford. <laughs> Ask me. Chief, can I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> What's the matter? What happened? Well, sir, I got this letter and it's all over. And she says that she never wants to see me again. And I was crazy about Agnes. Agnes? I thought it was Holly. No, sir, this is another girl. Crawford? Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, 
crawfin out. I'm crawfin out. Go away. Out. You too, Robinson. Out, out, out. 